Hello, Clement Creevely. Welcome back for our fifth video on the farm drugs you need to know for NCLEX. Uh, we are the best, in my opinion, NCLEX review business out there. Clinic Reviews. Go to clinicreviews.com to see where, when and where we are offering our upcoming reviews. And let's go ahead and get started with our fifth video. I am covering the top 50 uh, meds that you should know for NCLEX. And I'm teaching them in the form of doing NCLEX questions. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. You're caring for a patient who's taking lithium. Which of the following lab values would you report to the HCP, healthcare provider? Now, there are times you're going to get questions where they give you no hint whatsoever what the med is. Uh, I've heard this from a lot of people. It kind of freaks people out. So you have to be ready for this. And if um, you don't know what the med is, you're just going to have to do a good guess. In this case, I hope you know what lithium is. It's a pretty commonly tested med. It is the drug of choice for bipolar disorder. And it ends in EM. EM. Do you see how it ends in EM? Lithium is actually an electrolyte. If you were to look, uh, sitting in your high school chemistry class, you were to look at the periodic table, you'd see lithium on there and it will be labeled as a metal, interestingly enough. So the thing about lithium is it is affected by other electrolyte values in the body, including sodium. All right, sodium. So if you were purely guessing, maybe a good guess would be the word that sounds like the med, lithium, sodium. I would definitely rule out INR. If I were purely guessing, I would rule out INR just because I know this isn't um, warfarin and um, INR is a normal value. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. The hemoglobin is a little bit low. The BUN is a little bit low. I would probably rule out BUN because uh, I'm like, I'm never too worried about the BUN. So for me, it would be between sodium and hemoglobin. Nevertheless, um, what you need to know is because sodium is an electrolyte and lithium is an electrolyte, it has an effect on the level. So as sodium goes up, lithium goes down, which means the person is more prone to mania. And as the sodium level goes down, lithium goes up, which means they are more prone to toxicity. So that's why lithium is what you report. Normal lithium is 135 to 145. All right, next question. Which of the following drugs is most potent? All right, potency means strong. How strong is it? How likely is it to kill you? How much of it do you need to relieve your pain? Okay, that's what potent means. Now, you can look at the route, but the route really doesn't matter in a potency question because it's as strong as it is no matter the route. Now, you may need a lower dose if it's IV, because of how it's absorbed, but it really, uh, you know, route doesn't really affect potency. So potency has to do with how much drug do you need to give in order to find the relief. And if you look at Percocet, Percocet is 10 milligrams of oxycodone, 650 milligrams of acetaminophen. So if you look at the dose, it's the 10 milligrams that I'm most concerned about because that's oxycodone. So you need 10 milligrams of oxycodone to find relief. You need one milligram of hydromorphone to find pain relief. You need 60 milligrams of ketorolac, which is toradol, to find relief. And you need 0.1 milligrams of fentanyl to find relief. So I hope that tells you how potent fentanyl is. There's a reason why fentanyl is the number one killer of people as far as overdose is concerned, because you need very little fentanyl to kill you. So fentanyl is the most potent pain medication here. You're caring for a client who's receiving piperacil and tozobactin, which is Zosin, for acute appendicitis. For which of the following adverse effects would you contact the healthcare provider? All right, so you should know piperacil and tozobactam is an antibiotic, um, but this is not a question. You may go, well, I don't know what the side effects are. So here's the thing. When they ask you about side effects, I'm sorry, adverse effects, they're asking about adverse effects. Side effects are things you do not contact the healthcare provider about. Adverse effects are things you do contact the healthcare provider about. So what you say to yourself, if you don't know what the adverse effects are, you don't know what the side effects are, you say, is this something that typically or generally would be considered a side effect, just generally speaking? 
if because side effects are things we teach the patient to expect. Side effects are things we manage. We don't stop the med. We don't call the healthcare provider. Adverse effects are things we stop the med for. We do contact the healthcare provider. So I look at this list and I go, nausea. Would I call the doctor about nausea? Well, no. I'd tell him to take it with food or, or I'd give him something for nausea. I wouldn't call the doctor about it. Diarrhea. GI, GI symptoms are some of the most common side effects. So if I were guessing, if I didn't know what the side effects or adverse effects were, I would always guess GI side effects, which means I would not call the doctor about them. Okay. So I'm going to guess that nausea and diarrhea are side effects and not adverse effects. And I'm not going to call the doctor. I'm just going to manage them. Rash. Now rash, I've never told somebody a rash is expected after taking a medication. In fact, if somebody gets a rash, I say, ooh, you might want to call the doc because it could be an allergy, right? And I don't want them to have an allergic reaction. So a rash sounds to me like an allergic reaction. So I'm going to call the doctor about a rash. Headache. Headache is after GI side effects, headache is probably the most common side effect after GI stuff. So if I'm guessing, I'm guessing headache is a side effect, not an adverse effect. And I'm going to treat it with some acetaminophen or something. I'm not going to call the doctor about it. And then wheezing. Wheezing sounds like an allergic reaction to me. So I'm definitely calling the doctor. I've never told anybody, you should expect to be wheezing after you take this medication. In fact, I would say, generally speaking, it's the exact opposite. Can you think of any med? You go, well, yeah, you should expect to start wheezing after you take that. No, <laughs> no, that's not what you would expect. So if I'm purely guessing, I'm going to guess adverse effects are rash and wheezing. And you've got to understand that um, side effects and adverse effect questions are some of the most common farm questions. I would say the most common farm questions you're going to get. And you need to be ready and willing to at least guess well. Because you're going to get meds that you're like, I don't know the side effects. I don't know the adverse effects. So say to yourself, in general, in general, does this sound like something I would call the doc about? Or in general, does this sound like something? No, I would just manage it. If they talk about ble uh, hemorrhaging, chest pain, um, severe edema, rash, wheezing, cancer... <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, these are not side effects. This is stuff I don't want to happen. Okay. So that's, uh, that's some good guessing strategies. You're caring for a client who wishes to stop smoking and is asking for a prescription to help them quit. Which medication would you expect to be prescribed? All right. So these are all meds. I don't know about you, but these are meds that I'm not that familiar with. And what I mean by that is I don't give them all the time. Like in the hospital, I give ACE inhibitors. I give drugs for high cholesterol. I give antidepressants. I give all kinds of stuff commonly, these like GI um, GERD medications. These these four are not ones I typically give or that I'm that familiar with. Um, aripiprazole is a psych med. I do know that. So then I have to go, well, what about the other ones? So I recommend you just memorize this. Uh, Varenicline or varenicline is Shantix. I don't know if you've heard of Shantix. I've heard of Shantix, but not necessarily varenicline. So uh, dutasteride is for BPH. Sildenafil is Viagra, if you don't know the generic. And aripiprazole is Abilify, which is an atypical antipsychotic. So you might want to just memorize this one. I don't know if I have any good ways for you to remember it. <laughs> You're caring for a client who's experiencing severe allergic rhinitis. She's asking for a prescription to help with these symptoms. Which med would you anticipate to be ordered? Mamantine, Montelicast, Fluticasone, Methylprednisolone. So I look at this and I say, well, severe allergic ry rhinitis. So we're talking about allergies here. And we're talking about rhinitis, which is nasal congestion. So allergies. So I don't generally give uh, steroids for allergies. You may do um, an inhaled steroid, but methylprednisolone is not an inhaled steroid. So I'm going to cross that one out. And then I have mamantine, montelukast, and fluticasone. And I know fluticasone is a nasal spray. It's Flonase nasal spray. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pick that one because it's allergic rhinitis. Um, oh, Montelucast is singular, it is inhaled. But again, um, we're not worried about nasal or we're not worried about the lungs. We're worried about the nose because it's rhinitis. So methylprednisone is overkill. Mamantine is not appropriate. Montelucast is inhaled and not a, not appropriate route. So I'm going to do the flutycazone. All right. So that's our fifth farm video. Not very exciting. I know <laughs> not the most exciting meds in the whole world, uh, but it is what it is. You got to know them y'all. So, okay. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will be back planning to be back tomorrow with our sixth video. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.